the four states region, and particularly southeast Kansas, has been blessed to possess an inordinate amount of tremendous football coaches over the years. And perhaps no one commanded more respect and more deference in the height of their career and on into their retirement years than Harry McDonald. McDonald lettered for four years at Pittsburgh State, playing for coach Charlie Morgan from 1937 to 1940. And following college, he returned to his hometown of Arma, Kansas, where he began a long and extremely successful tenure as a football, basketball, and track and field coach at Arma High School. Overall, he compiled 271 career victories in the sports of football and basketball, and between 1953 and 1958, his football teams won 40 consecutive games before the advent of the state playoff system. And his 1952 track and field team also captured the Class B state championship. Men who played for Coach McDonald, like longtime college and NFL coach John Levra, speak freely and quickly the values and traits that Coach McDonald displayed that made him successful as a coach as well as in his life. This is really a great privilege for me to be able to talk about Coach Harry McDonald. He was my high school coach along with a lot of other athletes and uh, the things that made him unique as a coach I think was that he had great great discipline. Our teams were very tough mentally, very tough physically and believe me he taught us how to win. There were no shortcuts in practice. We had demanding practices really kind of made the games a little bit easier, I would say. And that was just his method and his style, and it really worked. He commanded all the respect of the players. The faculty was certainly on his side. And I think the league coaches were nothing but very, very proud to have coached against him. They were very respectful in the fact that he won so many games in conference play and out of conference play. For brothers Roy and Tim Cagle, Harry McDonald was more than a coach was someone that helped shape their lives in competition. I can truthfully say that Harry McDonald was the greatest male influence I had in my life because he was actually the first. Uh, I had an unfor unfortunate childhood. Uh, my dad died when I was six years old. So the male influence that Harry McDonald is so much in my mind, I'd get goosebumps just thinking about it. Uh, he was a dad to me. He, he was a coach, but he was also a dad because I didn't have a dad. And, and the, my brother feels the same way. Coach McDonald was a very tough-minded individual, but he was extremely fair. I have to say that. He demanded a lot of us. In fact, he demanded 100% effort at all times. And I have to say in all seriousness and in all honesty, he had a very profound effect on me. Uh, even as I went through college and then when I went through law school and when I became a trial lawyer, in fact, I've got a story I'm going to tell you, a absolutely a true story that involved Coach McDonald when I got into, into practice. And uh, like a lot of us, um, I grew up without a father. Mine uh, died just a few months before I was born. And I, I don't know if Coach McDonald was exactly a father figure, but he certainly filled a lot of roles as someone you could look up to and you could respect. And I think from that standpoint, he had a very profound influence. Uh, the story I was going to tell you involves a, uh, a major case that I had about uh, 15, 20 years ago. Uh, usually my specialty is medical malpractice, so I'm dealing with all the people that went to the Ivy League schools up here and all, but this one involves something a little bit different. I represented two brothers who a stockbroker had swindled out of several million dollars. And it was one of the leading brokerage firms in the world, and I talked to their general counsel. And it was one of those typical guys from New York City, downtown Manhattan, uh, just someone who was trying to tell you me how important he was and basically I've been a sole practitioner most of my career so he was talking to me from downtown New York City and I was in a relatively small town in Massachusetts and I told him I was representing the two brothers and that we were coming after the brokerage firm and we expected to be reimbursed for their losses and there was fraud all sorts of things like that and he said to me in a relatively huffy tone he said do you know who I am? And I said, well, no, I, I can't say that I do. And he said, well, I'm attorney so-and-so, and I've been lead counsel for this firm for years, and I've done this, and I've done that. He went to list a, a long progression of accomplishments. And he got done, and I said, well, you know, that's really very impressive. I said, well, let me ask you a question. I said, uh, do you know who I am? 
He said, no, I can't say that I do. And I said, well, you know, I'm a guy who practices by himself, and I've got some trial experience, and I've had some decent cases. I said, but th there's just one thing that I think you ought to know. And he said, what's that? And I said, do you know who Coach Harry McDonald is? And he said, no, I haven't the foggiest idea who that is. And I said, well, let me tell you something, pal. Before this case is over, you will. <laughs> In silence on the phone, he said, what does that mean? And I said, well, when, when the case is over, you'll understand. And what he didn't know is that the lessons I was taught on the football field have carried over well into adulthood and adult life. And the practice of law is very, very similar to what we learned and what we were taught about having to get up after you've been knocked down. And I could hear the coach saying, get in there, get after these people, don't let them get the better of you. So... That's the one story I actually remember where I used the coach's name when I got out in practice. For his former players, fear of failure often drove them, meaning that they didn't want to let down their mentor and their coach, Harry McDonald. Well, I think the coach motivated in many aspects based on fear. He, he was a stickler for success. And he said, you know, if you're not going to play the game to win, why should we even bother to keep scoring? And we lived in fear that if we didn't give 100% effort, practice would be a thousand times worse than a game ever could be. I mean, I remember times when we practiced so late that people had to come and turn their headlights on because they wouldn't turn the lights out on the practice field. And so people would come up and pull their cars and turn their headlights on and we'd still be hitting at 7, 8, 8.30 at night. Uh, there were times when we thought, you know, we might have a relatively easy day on Thursday because we played on Friday night. And when he wanted to get us ready, that was not the case. So he motivated us a lot by fear, but it wasn't fear for fear's sake. It was fear based on respect. You didn't want to look the man in the eye unless you'd done your best. Because you felt humiliated. If you held something in reserve, there was no need to do that. And that was the type of fear that he brought out. Fear not to be your best. And I have to say, the lessons that he taught have just carried over in life. And I really have to say, I'm proud to have played football for a man like him. Coach McDonald made a profound impact in his local community. He grew up, raised a family, and impacted countless other families as an educator and a coach. And in 1999, he was inducted into the Kansas State High School Activities Association Hall of Fame. McDonald passed away on November 24, 2003, leaving behind an indelible legacy as a family man and a successful coach. Coach McDonald was also a great family man and I certainly am glad that so many members of his family are here. They should feel quite proud of him. I think it's a great privilege to be able to offer Harry McDonald into the Pittsburgh State University Athletic Hall of Fame. I'm sorry the coach is not here. I understand this is posthumously, and I think it's a well-deserved honor. They just do not make men like Coach McDonald very often anymore. They do not. At this time, Mark McDonald will accept on behalf of his late father.
Being a four-year letterman here at Pittsburgh State, I know it meant a lot to my father. Uh, and I know the time that he spent here, these four, those four years that he developed his coaching philosophy and was able to carry that on to Arma High School, where he was fortunate to have a lot of success in <coughs> football, basketball, and track. But if he was standing here today, not me, he would tell you that he had a lot of great athletes and more yet young men to work with. Even though he had a lot of success on the playing field, I know my dad had more enjoyment when his ex-players would come by and visit him. And he could see just how successful they had become as young men. I know my dad is looking down on us today with a big grin on his face on this special day. And again, I'd like to thank Pittsburgh State for giving my father this honor. Thank you.